what is about to happen in our world, a lot of things will change. When I tell people this, I get that normal silence in the room. It's like, ooh, there will be Terminators walking the street, shooting all of us. I don't think that will ever happen. I'm saying it publicly. I don't think that we will ever reach that point where AI will turn against us. That's not because it's not possible that it happens, but it's because unless we correct a few other things before, we will never reach that point. So let me try to explain what I normally refer to as face RIP. So RIP in English is rest in peace. And, and basically this is uh, to remind me that we're gonna face quite a lot of RIPs. The R is the end of reality in a world where AI can fake this. By the way, next year, I guarantee you, if you want me back here, I could send my avatar. I could send an AI that will speak like me, walk like me, have those same weird accent and appear to have the same bald head. And that AI will know everything that I know and will answer the questions as if I would. That is so fake that our definition of reality might actually start to be impaired. When I talk about the end of reality, I also talk about the fact that the biggest AIs we've developed so far as humanity are what? Social media engines that have been trained for 10 to 12 years to manipulate humans to believe that something is real. And so one of the biggest trends that are going to rupture our human society is the kind of division you now see in the world about people thinking that what they know is the truth and that everyone else knows is not. That the reality is that if you compare a Google search engine, which you searched and you got a million websites as a result, so that you make up your mind what the truth is, and a Gemini, a product from Google where you search and it gives you one answer, and it tells you that this answer is true. I asked ChatGPT 4.0 about the name of my wife, and it confidently, very confidently, gave me the wrong name. Now, we don't question that, but that's the end of reality for most humans who will not have the intelligence to debate what they're told. That's that's number one. The I is the redefinition of intelligence itself. I'll tell you that very openly. I have four bestsellers as an author. I can guarantee you that if I write ever again, it will be a lot more difficult because there are 62,000 books that are launched in the US last year. This year, probably with AI, there will be 80. The next year, probably with AI, there'll be 120. It's just abundance. Every, the definition of intelligence is very different. Remember, what, what is about to happen is that we're turning intelligence into a utility, a plug in the wall, where I can literally, with a few lines of codes or now with a few prompts in speech, I can augment my intelligence with 100 IQ points more. So that basically gives me no advantage whatsoever over someone who has never studied programming. Do you understand that? So I'm no longer an intelligent programmer as compared to a machine that will code better than me or anyone in this room. With all due respect, you have different types of intelligences. But you can be more intelligent than I in coding by just saying, write a piece of code that does A, B, and C. That redefines intelligence. It redefines power. This is the biggest one of them all. Power is going to be concentrated because the ones that are going to have control over big AIs are going to have a very, very large control over all of us. So you would think that in the old days, the best hunter could feed the tribe for a day extra, the best farmer could feed the tribe for a month extra, and that the best farmer aggregated more wealth than the best hunter, the best industrialist had aggregated more wealth than the best farmer and so on, then the best AI platform will aggregate a lot more wealth than the best internet platform, which will show us the trillionaires, the first trillionaires in the world within the next few years, and will show us quite a bit of power in terms of nations competing with each other. Basically, that means the also the end of freedom. I'll talk about this very openly, and I actually shied away. This is the first time I talk about this publicly. Power is not only being concentrated, it's also being distributed very heavily. Because of the redefinition of intelligence, each and every one of us now has the access to tools they've never had before, which they can use for good, but also can use for bad. And if they use them for bad, it's a threat for the security of everyone, which gives every government around the world the right to say, no, hold on, we're going to have to restrict your freedoms a little bit because we don't know where the threat is coming from. I'm a Middle Eastern. It doesn't matter what I've achieved in my life. My bank blocks my account every six weeks. Why? Because they look at me and they go like, you're a threat. Your name says that you're a threat. So we're just going to make sure that when you send fun to your brother, uh, that your brother is not a terrorist. And that level of control is going to become more and more because the threat will come from everywhere. I think that, as I said openly, the definition of accountability will change because those who code those AIs are not always the ones 
ones that pay for the uses of them. And most interestingly, the definition of connection will change. Because we as humans, if you look at social media today, sadly, the definition of beauty has changed so much because of filters. If you can imagine an, a world where AI is telling you what beauty should look like, what connection should look like, what knowledge should look like, what friendship should look like, those definitions may redefine human connection.